Hi, I'm Tiffany with New Perspective Fitness. We're going to be running through a total body strength routine hitting all the major muscle groups, so I definitely got you covered. This video is part of our active aging series designed specifically with older adults in mind. We're going to begin with a body weight cardio warm up. So let's get moving. We're beginning our cardio warm up with a march, march right. Right, left, right, left. March wide. Toe tap, reach overhead. It's right and left. Now reach across at chest level. Right and left. We're looking forward. Show me the back of the shoulder. We have four, three, two. Now hamstring curl, arm curl. It's right and left. Four with the right. Four, three, two, four with the left. Four, three, two. Now two with the right. Two, two left. Eight singles, count down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. March right. Toe tap, arm reach forward, right and left. Two with the right. Two left. March left. March wide. You know what's coming, toe tap, arm reach with the left and the right. Left and right. Let's do four, three, two. Reach across that chest level. Four more. Four, three, two. Hamstring curl, arm curl. Left, right. Four with the left now. Four, three, Two, four with the right. Four, three, two, two with the left. Two, two right. Eight singles, count down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. March with your left. Toe tap, arm reach forward, left, right. Two with the left. Two with the right. March right. We're gonna go out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. Low and high. Now if this is too much, you could be here all day. You could be here all day. Or you get low. Yep, waking up those quads, waking up those hips. Let's do four, three, two, one. March right. Toe tap, press the arms forward, right and left. Two with the right, two with the left. March left. All right, we go out, out, in, in. Take this at your level. You can say hi, or you could go low. Get nice and warm. Let's do four more. Pumping those arms, because we're trying to get out every part of us nice and warm. All right, let's stop right there. And now we're not gonna go in so much of a structured warm up. You're gonna take this at your own pace. So we're just standing with our feet hip distance apart. Don't ever lock those knees out. We have a soft bend in our knees. And I want you to do some shoulder rolls back with me. And again, take this at your own pace. Nice and easy. Now's the time to catch your breath. Sometimes when we're exercising, we tend to hold our breath because we're so focused on the movement that we're trying to do, especially if you're listening to instruction. That's why I had you count down with me. That's a way for me to try to get you to breathe. So if you didn't count down, you better count down next time you do this video. Now I want you to do a hug and release. So this is again, a great way to warm up the back of the shoulders. We're hugging, my right arm is on top and then I'm going to open up, super exaggerated, left arm on top, and then open up. Again, right arm on top, give yourself a nice hug. Open up, left arm on top, and open up, good. We're gonna finish with taking our fingertips to our shoulders. I call these elbow rolls. So this is just lubricating through the shoulder joint. 
The shoulder is involved in so much of what we do today. It's a big stabilizer for our chest pressing and our rows. And then towards the end, we will actually hone in and work the shoulder joint specifically. And now go back. Now this feels better, right? Because it really works against that tight pec minor. And because we're all like here all the time. So it really opens up the area where we really need it. Let's do two more. Awesome, great job. So hopefully we're nice and warm and we're gonna come back, have a water break, and we're gonna do our first strength series. Our first exercise in this series is a chest press with a resistance band. I have the spry resistance band and this is the medium intensity. You could also use a flat band if that's what you have available to you. We're basically just bringing this band behind our back, obviously underneath our arms, and we're not holding onto the handles. Holding onto the handles is too easy. I want you to exhale as you fully extend your arms forward and then inhale when you bend. When we resistance train, it's absolutely imperative that we are control, we are in control of the weight that we are pressing or pulling. So as I do this exercise, I am pressing out, fully extending through my arms. There's just, just a little micro bend, right? A little micro bend in my elbow. And when I am bringing the weight back in, I'm resisting the band from snapping back too quickly. The breath usually is to exhale as you press forward, feel the abdominal brace, and then inhale as you drive in. So, and then breathe in. The most important part of working out is just to make sure that you're breathing. So if you're the type of individual and you're thinking, oh, I was breathing opposite of that, that is okay. That's fine, just breathe. We always wanna get oxygen to our working muscles. We're going to do four more. Nice and controlled. One more. Nice. Transitioning to a tricep extension. So we just worked our chest, our triceps, and our shoulders, and now we're just isolating our triceps. So this is a muscle synergist, meaning it was part of the movement that we just did. I would like you to hold your resistance band handle in your right hand, and this is behind your head. Now the band is truly just dangling down to the floor. I have my left arm internally rotated. I'm gonna show you a quick snap of that. So we look like this. Okay, now we need to look straight forward. Please don't look down. Because we have this band handle behind us, we might have a tendency to look down. You gotta fight that. Look straight forward, exhale as you press up, extend through your right arm, and then you're controlling the band on the way down. We're exhaling on the pressing up phase. And when you exhale, you should feel your abdominals brace. And that's because your abdominal muscles are a muscle of respiration. And so they will fire and contract with each exhalation. You're also feeling work in your shoulder. That's why we warmed them up so well at the beginning because our shoulders do a lot of stabilizing work. So we want them nice and warm for all of the work that we have to put them through. We're gonna do five more. So we're strengthening our right tricep muscle and shoulder, but I do want to draw your attention to our arm that's behind us. We're working internal rotation of our left shoulder and that is really important. One more here. Okay, great. So now let's switch sides. So we're holding onto the handle in our left hand. Again, the band is just dangling down. We're not stepping on the band. And here we go. We're gonna exhale as we press up and then bend. Good. So I was talking about how internal rotation is so important, right? And now we're working internal rotation of our right shoulder. 
Uh, there is a test that we do, it's called the back scratch test uh, when I work with seniors, and that's just asking people how high can they reach their um, arm behind their back. So right now, just to give you a reference, my arm is basically at my bra strap line, which is good range of motion. Some of you might have had uh, issues with your shoulder and maybe it's too hard to get your arm that high. So maybe your arm is closer to your butt, like your hip or your pant line, and that's A-OK. -okay. We're all at our own um, journey with our health and fitness. We're gonna do five more. Three more. Last one. Excellent. So at this time, we are going to move on to working the uh, quadriceps and glutes. We're gonna do a multi-joint compound movement here. So I am grabbing my five pound dumbbells. I'm gonna go a little bit conservative here. This is a front squat. I would recommend if you're new, you could start with no resistance, um, three, five pound. And then if you're more advanced, I'd like to see you at maybe eight or 10 pounds. We're going to take a seat in our chair and our feet should be firmly planted on the ground. Front squat means that we're going to keep the weights right at our shoulders throughout this entire series. So I wanna make sure that my feet are positioned correctly so that they're right in a good angle. They were too far out, so now I'm bringing them in. To execute a front squat, you're actually gonna begin with your torso first. So your torso leans forward. You're almost moving towards your knees. And then I want you to stand up. And then we're going to reach our butt back to sit back down. Now, if you're someone that has a lot of knee pain, maybe osteoarthritis, or if you've had knee replacement, you might find it more beneficial when you go down to really reach your butt back. If you don't have knee issues, you don't have to be so exaggerated with your squat. And that's going to put a little bit more pressure on your knee and that's fine because you have healthy knees. With this movement, we're going to exhale when we're working against gravity. So I want you to exhale when you go up and then inhale when you slowly go back down. And we're truly just standing. When you stand and you're walking, your glutes are firing. So you don't have to overly contract your glutes. If you're standing, your glutes are already contracted. We're going to do five more. Now you might notice that your biceps and your shoulders are getting a little bit tired here because you're isometrically working that upper body. Isometric exercises are actually phenomenal for helping lower blood pressure because what happens is we're restricting blood flow to the area that is isometrically contracted, meaning the upper body right now. And then as soon as we release the arms, it is going to release nitric oxide. And what that does is it widens and dilates the blood vessels. So really good for helping lower blood pressure. So we always like to include um, a little bit of isometric work in our workouts. At this point, we're gonna put our weights down and please grab your Pilates ball. So you could also use like a little sports ball, like if you have one at home, it's squishy. We're going to sit back in our chairs. Now I do have uh, back support here because I'm short. And if you don't need that, that's great. We're going to place the ball between our foot and ankle complex. And we're now executing leg extension. This is a single joint exercise. It's a superset. So we just worked the quads and the glutes and the hamstrings and the core and the back. And now we're just focusing in on the quads right here. You're going to sit up nice and tall and I want you to exhale as you take the uh, legs out and squeeze the ball in that top position and then maintain the squeeze as you lower down. So we're gonna go up, squeeze in, and then lower down. And remember, we're maintaining that squeeze as we lower down. So where are you feeling this work? So we already talked about the quads. That's the top of the thighs. Bonus, you should be feeling this in your core. So when I go up and I'm exhaling, I'm really feeling my abdominals contract and tighten. 
Because our feet are flexed, we're working our shins, anterior tibialis. So working the shins is really important because that will help with your walking gait. If you didn't have strong shins, you might like heel walk and it you would sound really, really loud when you walk. It's called a foot slap. I'm also feeling my inner thighs, right? So when we squeeze in, that is firing off our inner thighs. It might even engage your pelvic floor muscles, which is great. We're gonna do three more. And one more. Beautiful. All right, so let's grab another sip of water and then I'll run you through a second series. All right, we're in our second of three series and we're going to begin with a single arm row. What we need is a dumbbell, just one dumbbell and a chair. Now, if you've been doing this video for a while, you know the weight to grab, I would say 10, 12, 15 pounds. If we're new, I would say maybe five pound dumbbells or eight pound dumbbells is where we wanna start. So I'm grabbing a 15 pound dumbbell here. What we are going to set ourselves up is we need our chair and we're going to have whichever hand is holding the dumbbell, you're going to have that leg back. So from here, you're going to exhale and bring the dumbbell up towards your hip and then elongate the arm down nice and easy. When you execute this row, you're working primarily the largest muscle in your back. It's called your latissimus dorsi. Now, ideally, as you do this exercise, the reason why I said row up towards your hip is I want you to make sure that you're not overstressing your shoulder joint. You're working your bicep muscle. You are still working the shoulder. Again, we just don't want to overstress it. And your core is having to be nice and braced. So your abdominal muscles are firing to support your low back because when you're bent over, your back is in a vulnerable position and it demands that the abs fire. We're gonna do five more repetitions. Remember, when we resistance train, we're going very slow and controlled, especially on the lengthening down phase when the weight is moving back to the start position. Two more repetitions. Last one. Beautiful. Now we're switching arms. Again, the hand that's holding the dumbbell, your leg is going to be extended back in this lunge position. We're supporting our other hand on our chair. Nice neutral spine. Exhale as you row up to the hip and then elongate nice and slow. We're exhaling as we row up towards our hip or maybe you could think belly button. And we're aiming for muscle endurance today, so we're shooting for 15 repetitions. If you feel like it's best for you to stop sooner than the 15 repetitions, that is absolutely fine, and you'll just build your way up to muscle endurance as you're more consistent. Five more repetitions if you're going for the 15 with me. We're also working wrist extension on your arm that is against the chair and you're working shoulder stabilization. Two more. Nice. So we just worked the lats and now we're going to move on to hammer curls. So this is very similar to before um, where we worked you remember when we worked the chest and then the triceps? Now we're doing the back and then the biceps. So these are muscle synergists. So the biceps were already involved a little bit and now we're gonna isolate them. I'm going to use 10 pound dumbbells for hammer curls. Again, if you're new, I'd recommend 
three, five, and then work your way up to eight, 10, maybe 12. So we're grabbing our dumbbells. We need two of them and speed or hip distance apart. We wanna be very, very still through our torso, abdominals braced. We will exhale as we curl up. This is a neutral grip. That means our wrists face one another. And then you're gonna slowly lower down. This is a perfect exercise for me to get a little geeky and talk about the three muscle actions because it is very clear. So when you are training resistance training, there are three muscle actions that we're always gonna work through. Coming up, this is the concentric contraction. Right here, right now, this is called the isometric contraction. And then when you lower down, that's called the eccentric contraction. And they've studied all of these muscle actions and they've posed the question, which muscle action is the most effective for building strength? And the answer is the lowering down phase, the eccentric contraction. So we can come up for about two counts, hold for about two, and then we really want to lower down slowly for four, three, two, one. Because when you go real slow on that eccentric contraction, it absolutely makes training more effective. And that's what we're all about, right? We're here putting in the work, but let's just make it even more effective for ourselves. So again, our goal is 15 repetitions. We're halfway. If you want to stop at 10, that's a-okay. This is nine. And lower down nice and slow. 10. As we do this move, be very, very conscious of how your body, be very, very aware. I don't wanna see you thrusting back and extending your back. You're very, very strong through that core. You're isolating and working your biceps and your shoulders and your forearms. This is great for improving grip strength. Two more. Last one. Excellent. All right, so now we're gonna put these weights down and we're going to move on to a hip hinge. So this is a good morning. It's a compound move just like we did the squats, but we're now working the posterior chain. So I recommend that you find a wall, especially when you're new to this, because it's an awesome uh, tactile cue for ourselves. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna start probably, I don't know, maybe about eight to 12 inches away from the wall. Get fairly close. Maybe if you're new, start with like six inches. And you're gonna place your arms right here at your chest. And we're moving from our hips. All I want you to think about is drive your hips back towards the wall. And when you make contact with the wall, stand up. And if you think, ooh, I was quite close to the wall, I wanna stretch back more, then walk away from the wall, because you're trying to find that sweet spot. So we're just moving at our hips and trying to touch the wall and then stand up. I moved a little bit too far away. So now for my third repetition, I'm just adjusting and trying to find that sweet spot. This is perfect. So as I'm doing this move, I'm exhaling as I hinge at my hips and move them back. As soon as my glute muscles, my butt touches the wall, I stand up. Because if you were to continue moving through your torso, you're no longer loading your posterior chain, you're only working your back the erector spinae, and that is a very stressful position. And that might be the individual that says, oh, when I do, you know, good mornings or deadlifts, it really hurts my back. They're probably executing this movement incorrectly. So again, all we're doing is exhaling, reaching our hips towards the wall behind us, feel the weight mostly in your heels, and then stand tall. You should feel this in the back part of your thighs and your glutes and a little bit in your low back. It feels that your low back is working. It's not a strain, it's not stressful. It's just, you know, it's working. Just like 
our arms. They're probably still fried from those hammer curls. We're gonna do three more. There's always a little soft bend because we don't want to overstress our knees. One more. Nice, okay. So that is a compound movement targeting the posterior chain. And now we're gonna go into a single joint move and we're going to work our hamstrings. At this time, you're gonna grab one of your mini loops. If you're new, well, first of all, you could do no weight at all, or you could use a light or a medium. I'm gonna use a heavy so that I can really feel this movement. I recommend taking a seat just so that we're safe getting this on. And then, you're going to use your chair. So I'm just gonna turn my chair around here. Okay, let's go ahead and have one foot forward. One foot is closer to your chair and the other foot is staggered back. I'm te technically hip distance apart here, but now I've staggered myself. You see that the leg that I'm targeting, I'm on the ball of my foot. Now, for optimal hip range of motion, we're not gonna stay completely upright you will feel more natural if we're in a fixed forward hinge position. But from here, I'm not gonna be moving about. I'm gonna be in a fixed position. Now you're going to curl towards 90 and then tap the foot down. Exhale to bend, inhale to straighten. And what you're feeling is the hamstring muscle on the leg that you're curling is firing and contracting. Now, the leg that's stable, the leg that's closest to the chair is also feeling work because we're having to stabilize our body, but the primary mover is the band and the foot that's driving up towards that 90 degree angle. We're exhaling on the curling phase, inhale to go down. That's 10, you could stop there or keep pushing through for five more. And if you're not using a band, you could certainly curl much higher. It's just the band demands that you stop at 90, otherwise it's gonna roll up and get super weird. All right, now go ahead and switch. Stable leg is closer to the chair. We're in a fixed forward lean, just a little bit of a hinge here. We're on the ball of the foot that we're going to be curling and curl up and down. And I like this miniature band positioned right near my ankle bone, you know, just right near that he heel. If it's too high, it might not feel right. So feel free to adjust and find that sweet spot for yourself. Again, your mental focus is on that posterior chain. You're feeling it in the back of the thigh. That's the hamstring muscle. You might feel it a little bit in the glute, you know, because the hamstrings attach to that glute muscle. Glute meaning butt. Three more. Okay, now I want you to take a seat or you could slide out of this nice and easy if that's safe for you. And we're gonna take a water break and come back for our third series. We're back with our third and final series and we're going to start with our Pilates ball and target our abdominal muscles. So grab your Pilates ball and we need our chair. We're going to place the ball behind your back. Now where you place the ball is really dependent on your torso and how tall you are. So you're going to find the right sweet spot for yourself. A general rule of thumb is to place the ball pretty much right at the bra strap line or the bottom of the shoulder blades. Some people prefer it a little bit lower, okay? So here is the exercise move. We are going to place our arms at our chest 
and I want you to flex forward, working our rectus abdominis, this is your superficial six pack abs, and then you're going to slowly extend back. So we wanna feel supported during this back extension. If you don't move your ball and adjust it. Exhale as you go forward, and then breathe in when you extend back. That's working the erector spinae. This movement, we're gonna keep going. Exhale to go forward, and inhale to go back. You just keep moving, okay? This movement is phenomenal, not only for your stomach and your back, but we're also targeting muscles in our neck. And so many of us, especially as seniors, we have a lot of issues with our neck because we might have osteoarthritis there, or it might just be in pain from forward head posture, which is a common posture misalignment. But this exercise is phenomenal because you're working your cervical uh, flexors and you're working your cervical extensors. The reason why I'm such a stickler on how you breathe with this particular exercise is our abdominal muscles are a muscle of respiration. So when you exhale on that forward crunch, it truly is firing off the abdominal muscles more. This is 10, so feel free to stop at 10, or you can keep pushing through with me on to 15, getting into a little bit higher rep range. Three more. And this is working your superficial six pack abs. And this is a nice key component, but it shouldn't be, you know, your main focus of core work. We really wanna focus more on core stabilization because that translates more into activities of daily living. Done right there. So our next move is doing just that. So I mentioned you don't want to just crunch, you can't crunch your way to a tighter midsection, by the way. We're just trying to make a strong, healthy core. Now we're working core stabilization. So this is working your deep transverse abdominis. It's also working your uh, psoas muscle, which flexes the hip. I want you to take the ball up in the air and we're going to drive one knee up and then stretch away and then drive the other knee up. It's an alternating move and stretch away. I want you to exhale when the knee drives up, inhale to lengthen, exhale when the knee drives up and then lengthen the arms and legs. So our core really is meant to stabilize our spine and protect our back. And when I work with newer clients and I say, all right, you know, really feel those abs contract and brace. They're like, Ugh, I don't feel it. <laughs> Sometimes they say that, I don't feel it. As long as you don't feel any back pain while you're doing this, I promise you, your abs are firing and contracting. And if you are feeling back pain, it just means that you have weakness there. So maybe you do fewer reps, take a break and then join in. And then eventually we'll work our way up. If you have shoulder issues, maybe it hurts to fully extend your arms. So you're just only extending to the length that you can execute. We don't have to match each other. We're all just working with our own bodies and within our own ability. We're gonna do five more rounds. This is a long set, but very effective. And like I said earlier, this really translates into activities of daily living because throughout many activities that we do, we do need to have our abdominals brace and contract and support our spine. Two more rounds. Final time through. Okay, excellent. So now we're moving on to shoulders. So for our shoulders, we're going to begin with front raises. Maybe no weight. If you have issues with your shoulder, you might wanna do no weight at all. I am going to be using five pound dumbbells for reference. Some days if I'm feeling crazy strong like Hercules, Hercules I might be able to handle eight or 10, but really most people are comfortable with five. Our feet are hip distance apart and we are going to exhale and bring the dumbbells up just to shoulder height. Notice how my wrists are facing one another and then I'm lowering down with control. 
We do not want to be moving or rocking through our midsection. We're just nice and tight through that torso. Soft bend in the knees. This is really one of those exercises where it might start off easy and then you're just like, oh my word, as we get to those higher repetitions. So definitely st start off conservatively. And when I say work your way up to eight or 10, I'm talking like years of training. You know, it's not gonna happen within weeks. It's all about consistency. So the more you do a specific exercise, you will get stronger in that area. Now we are at 10 right here. So we might wanna stop at 10, but we're gonna keep going to 15 if you wanna join me. We're always thinking about those three muscle actions. With that isometric hold, just pretend that someone's gonna snap a picture and then lower it down. So you just wanna hold it enough. One more. All right, wonderful. So now we're putting down our dumbbells and at this time we're going to grab a miniature band. I recommend extra light if you're new, light. Some people work their way up to medium, but you really wanna keep it easy. We're working external rotation of our shoulders. For this, you're going to place the band between your pointer and thumb, all right? Pointer and thumb. Now your elbows have to stay locked in, shoulders down away from the ears. I don't wanna see any of this. That even feels uncomfortable, but maybe some people live here, but ah, just ah, depress. Now from here, we're exhaling as we go out, inhaling to return. And again, you don't want the band to be in control of you. You're in control of the band. This not only works your um, shoulder and your external rotator, but it also works your biceps because your biceps are isometrically contracted. The biceps mean front of the arms. I want your mental focus to be on the back of your shoulders. So like think rear deltoid. Also, if you have a pretty good range of motion, you might be able to feel this right in between the shoulder blades. So that would be the rhomboids, middle traps. You're also feeling an opening up of your chest when you do this exercise. This is very good for posture. Again, as long as you are relaxed and depressed through those shoulders. Now we're gonna do five more, or you could stop around 10. It's really common when you're strength training to feel muscle fatigue, those last few repetitions. I personally describe it almost like as a, like a burning sensation, like a warmth in my muscle, but not everyone feels that. So you could be like, what are you talking about, Tiff? But that's how I describe it. All right, beautiful. So now those shoulders are hopefully really feeling it. Our final exercise is going to be exercises to help your gait. So I'm going to be targeting uh, calf raises and then we're gonna do heel walks. For calf raises, we can truly handle a lot of weight. So I'm gonna go with 10 pound dumbbells. If you're new, maybe you're gonna go with five, eight. Um, if you're more advanced, maybe you wanna even hold 15s. So I'm grabbing my 10s. You need two dumbbells for this movement. We're gonna stand with our feet hip distance apart. And I want you to come up onto the balls of the feet, the heels lift, and we're, we're gonna lower back down. So we're gonna exhale to go up, and then lower back down, good. We're trying to keep our feet parallel and our heels par parallel to one another. You might notice that your feet wanna roll out, but that we are working on parallel, parallel. And your arms are just down by your sides. Now, with this exercise, we wanna to try to lower down with control, but I wanted to get our first few repetitions in and get us used to that exercise. But now we're going up, we're holding that isometric hold, and then we're lowering down slow. If balance is an issue for you, it's A-okay to use a chair 
for this exercise. You're still working the same muscles. I'm making us all do 15. I tried to sneak that past you. I didn't warn you at the 10. We're going for 15. Two more, let's finish strong. One more. Okay, wonderful. So we're done with these dumbbells and we're going to pair this with the opposite muscle group. So you just worked your um, calf muscles here and now we're gonna work our shins. So with this one, it's gonna be a timed exercise. I'm gonna put one minute on the clock and let me show you first, you're truly just walking on your heels. That is <laughs> the movement. Okay, so let's do it. We're gonna put one minute on the clock. Ready, gotta find it and go. So here we are, you're walking on your heels. Try not to compensate your body too much. What we're doing is we're targeting our shins. So the front part of the lower leg. We touched upon this a little bit, but this is just important for a good walking gait. Honestly, this is a little bit of a balance exercise too. So I do some balance videos and this is in there also. This muscle group, we're, we're all guilty of not working it enough. So you might really be feeling fatigue. I'm doing okay right now. We have 20 more seconds. And if you have a, like a longer space, like use as much space available to you when you're doing this heel walk. Ooh, I'm starting to feel the burn. Less than 10 seconds left, nice. and stop. That was a long 10 seconds, but I swear. All right, at this time, grab a sip of water. We're gonna come back for a nice uh, stretch cool down. Welcome back from your water break and now we're coming into stretching and cool down. We're going to begin with modified downward facing dog. I am going to place my hands on the back of my chair and slowly walk back one foot at a time. And I'm going to stop when my head is right in between my extended arms. This is a phenomenal stretch for your shoulders. You're working specifically the joint angle shoulder flexion. If you do have issues with your shoulders and this is too intense for you, you could walk your body in and have more of your um, elbows on and just take some pressure off of the shoulders. You're also feeling a stretch in the back of the thighs, that's the hamstrings, your low back, maybe your calf muscles, that's the lower leg, if you're tight there. Again, where you feel this is really dependent on where you're tight. Now we're slowly going to step in one foot at a time because when your head is below your heart or close to that, you can experience lightheadedness or dizziness. So we just need to be very aware of that and move slowly. Your next stretch, I would want you to take your right leg back, your left knee is bent and it's forward and I'm pressing into my heel. My heel is down. This is a stretch for your gastrocnemius, it's a calf muscle. This is a great stretch to do after you've done a lot of walking too. Now we're gonna shift. So watch me first. I want you to bend your back knee. Notice my heel is still grounded. This is referred to as a soleus stretch. It's also a calf muscle and you're getting deeper into this. It's also phenomenal for working knee flexion and ankle dorsiflexion. This serves you well when you're going downstairs or upstairs and we're just breathing deeply throughout all these stretches. Now let's go ahead and switch. So now I'm taking my left leg back, I'm pressing into my heel, my front knee is bent. And now watch me, I'm going to bend by my back knee, shift my hips back and this is now stretching the soleus. 
We're not concerned about what's happening with the front knee. It just naturally kind of straightens a little bit, but there's still a bend in the front leg. Great, now we're moving on to a hamstring stretch. So for the hamstring stretch, I am going to have you hold on and let's go ahead. It doesn't matter which leg. I want you to bring one leg up and then I want you to hinge forward. Because this is you know, inclusive to everybody, I'm going to have everybody hinge because it's just safer universally versus doing a rounded back. So you're just hinging at the waist here. My foot is flexed, so I'm thinking toes to my nose as I perform this stretch. You're feeling this in the hamstring, which is that back of the thigh. And again, if you're tight through your calf muscle, you might feel a stretch in your calf, that lower leg. Good, now you can uh, bend your knee to come out of this, and then let's bring our other leg up. And same thing, we're, we're upright and then we're hinging just as far as we can lean forward. And, and you should feel that pulling sensation. That This is easy and oh, it's getting harder as you lean forward. If you notice a significant difference between your sides when I stretch one side and then the other, if there's one side that's tighter, you should stretch it more. So that's your homework. If you ever notice a tighter side, give me more stretches on that side. Good, so we're bringing our upper body up and now we're going to come into seated figure four stretch. Okay, so I'm gonna come square to you. I want you to sit forward in your chair and let's bring our right leg up. Now from here, maybe for some people this is enough of a stretch, like ugh, you might actually look like this, you know? But your leg is gonna come up, you're working external rotation of your right hip, and now I want you to hinge forward. I'm not rounding, I'm hinging. When you do that, you're gonna feel a pull in your hip and glute on the right side. This is stretching your piriformis, which is a muscle in your butt, and it, that can get really tight. Another aspect about this exercise that I want you to think about, if you can, think of pushing your right knee down and lifting your foot up. There's, your, your knee is probably gonna be significantly higher than your ankle complex, but just pretend that we can even that out. Good, to exit this pose, we're gonna bring our torso up and then take the right foot down and now bring the left foot up. And again, a lot of us probably look like this, okay? But to the best of our ability, we're gonna push that left knee down and I want you to hinge forward at your waist. Go to that sticking point. So the question is when you stretch, you know, where should we go? Like how far is too far or where should we go? You wanna go right below your pain threshold. That's actually a answer to a test question on an exercise physiology um, test. So right below your pain threshold and there shouldn't be any shaking. Shaking is an indication that you have gone too far. And we're doing static stretches, which means we're going to the point of where we feel a lot of tension and we're holding. There's no bouncing. Great, slowly come on up. All right, the next stretch that we're going to do is standing quadriceps stretch. Now, you might want uh, a stretching strap. So I have one here just for demo purposes. What that would look like is you would create a little cradle for yourself. You're holding on for balance assistance and then you're just going to pull your leg up using the stretching strap, okay? So that is an option. A lot of people do have pretty good knee flexion and they can grab on to their foot. Also, I have some clients that they're okay with grabbing onto their, their pant leg or like a sock. So that's an option too, okay? So we're just going to pull our heel up towards our butt. This is stretching the front of the thigh and it's also really good for knee flexion. And we're breathing deeply. Nice, and then go over to the other side. So I'm just gonna move this a little bit here and just pull that heel up towards your butt. So again, you might wanna hold on to 
a pant leg here. You could use a towel. You just use a towel right here and hold. And when I'm in this position, I'm thinking of keeping my abs nice and braced and we're, we're holding on, right? I'm, oh, I'm talking and pulling my hand off, but definitely don't make this a balance exercise. That's for another day. We're just trying to relax and breathe and stretch our quadricep muscle, the front of the thigh. All right, up next, we are going to just start stretching that upper body. So I'm gonna sit forward in my chair so that my feet are flat on the ground. I want you to take your right arm across and then we're just going to hold today. So don't let that shoulder creep up. Make sure it's down and depressed. You're feeling this in the back of the shoulder. And let's go ahead and switch. Take the left arm across and hold. Now, technically, you could hold higher if that feels comfortable for you. We just don't wanna put pressure directly on our elbow joint because that would be hyperextending the elbow joint. Good, and now let's reach our right arm up. Please pat the center of your back and look straight forward, all right? Now I'm pulling my right elbow in a little bit more because I can tolerate that. I'm pressing the back of my head into my right arm that's behind me. Wonderful, and let's go ahead and switch. Left arm up, pat the center of your back, pull that elbow in, and press your head back into the left arm that's behind you. A bad form that I sometimes see is people like looking forward here and down. So that's why I always say press your head back. It helps deepen the stretch too. And it even works the cervical flexors. Okay, good. Now we're gonna stretch through our neck. We're going to internally rotate the right arm so it looks like this. Okay. Now that we're on the same page, I want you to tilt and then take your hand here and I want you to feel this in your upper traps. Try to lengthen the space between your earlobe and shoulder. And now please you're going to look down at your left thigh or you could even think pant pocket. This is shifting the stretch into your levator scapulae which is a muscle um, in the neck and you're feeling it like right in the back of the neck, but still on the right side. And now we're gonna finish on the other side. Internally rotate, go to the right, gently pull. And look at your right hip now. That's stretching your levator scapulae. Feel that in the back of the neck. and release. Wonderful job today. Thank you so much for joining me. Catch you next time.